Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to get 100% of your daily calcium without dairy products. It's very easy to get calcium from dairy products like butter, milk, yogurt, but some of us are lactose intolerant and we cannot consume any dairy or most dairy. I love butter, cheese, and yogurt, but whenever I would eat them, my stomach would hurt or bloat. Then I did a test and found that I was lactose intolerant. What is lactose? It's a milk sugar. Lactase is the enzyme that breaks down lactose in your intestinal tract. If your intestine doesn't contain lactase, you're lactose intolerant. I do sneak a little piece of cheddar cheese sometimes, and that's fine as long as it doesn't upset your stomach. Some people who are lactose intolerant can handle cheese, especially aged cheese. Fresh cheese like mozzarella, that's a little bit more difficult on the stomach. Yogurt is supposed to be very good for your stomach, so I used to eat a lot of it, but it turns out it's really bad for my stomach. Some people can handle yogurt even though they're lactose intolerant, so try it and see how it affects you. Dairy milk is the absolute worst for lactose intolerance. Heavy cream, which I love, and half and half, that also has a really bad effect on people with lactose intolerance. Some lactose intolerant people can handle hard cheese and lactose-free milk. Here's a description of what lactose-free milk is from Organic Valley's website. To remove lactose, we add the lactase enzyme to our premium certified organic pasture-raised milk. After slow mixing for 24 hours, the enzyme breaks down the lactose into the simple sugars, glucose, and galactose, which are easier to digest. We test our lactose-free milk to ensure the lactose is undetectable. So most people with lactose intolerance can enjoy lactose-free milk with confidence. You can try it and see if your stomach can handle it. I didn't include it in the list because it's not widely available. That's why I'm focusing on tofu, vegetables, and nuts that you can find in most stores. After researching and pretty much forcing myself to figure this out, I wanted to share it with you guys. Now, it is very difficult to plan meals and get 100% of calcium every day. And I'm not telling you that I get 100% every day because I don't. Um, it's really difficult to do that and you have to be very disciplined. But if you have this list in front of you, you can buy most of the products, have them in your kitchen, so at least it's physically there and you can try to eat most of them. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of the brands that you see in this video. No one has paid me to do this video. Um, the brands in this video are just the products that I use daily that I like and that have high amounts of calcium. When you go shopping, just buy whatever products and brands that's available in your store that have the highest amount of calcium. Just make sure to check the nutrition label for extra sugar and sodium. The general recommendation for the amount of calcium every day is 1000 milligrams. If you're a woman over 50 or a man over 70, it's 1200 milligrams. That's recommended by the National Osteoporosis Foundation. If you go by the Food and Drug Administration, the amount is 1300 milligrams. They changed that from 1000 milligrams last year. When you look at the nutrition label of a product, it'll list calcium in milligrams and percentage or just percentage. For this video, I'm gonna give you the percentage based on 1000 milligrams a day. It's just gonna be even across the board. And if you have the milligrams listed on the nutrition label, it'll be easy to figure out the percentage. I'll start with the highest calcium foods and work my way down. You do want to see the whole list because you're going to get tired of eating the same thing every day. Also for fruits and vegetables, there's no nutrition label. So what I've done is get whatever information I can from reputable sites, but from site to site, there will be a slight variation in the milligrams and the percentage. First on the list is non-dairy milk, and you have several options. Soy milk. The serving size is one cup, eight ounces, or 236 milliliters. Soy milk gives you 30% of your calcium, which is almost a third of your daily intake. The nutrition facts say calcium 300 milligrams and 20%. That's because they're basing this on 1400 milligrams of calcium instead of the 1000 that I'm using. As long as they give you the milligrams of calcium, you can figure out the percentage easily. There are different flavors of soy milk. This is unsweetened, which is really hard to drink. There's the original soy milk. There's added sugar in this original soy milk, but there's also more calcium. 450 milligrams instead of the 300. 
since we're using 1,000 milligrams, you're getting 45% of your calcium just by drinking one cup of this original soy milk. For the rest of the video, I'm going to base the percentages on 1,000 milligrams of calcium, no matter what the package says. This way, it's just even across the board. So the unsweetened gives you 30% calcium. The original sweetened gives you 45%. That's really a lot for one cup. It's almost half of your daily intake. The regular is not bad at all if you're used to drinking dairy whole milk. Now there are flavored versions of soy milk, there's vanilla, there's chocolate. Just check the amount of calcium on those before you buy. Also, if you're watching your sugar intake, check the percentage of sugar. If you don't like the taste of soy milk, the chocolate or vanilla would be a good option because it masks the regular soy taste. Soy milk is also the thickest among all the non-dairy milks. Almond milk. This also comes in regular, unsweetened, chocolate, etc. It does have a distinct almond taste. It's a little less thick than soy milk. If you have a nut allergy, of course, stay away from this. Calcium is 450 milligrams. Again, that would be 45%. So this almond milk and the regular soy milk have the same amount of calcium. It does have less calories than soy milk. This is 60 calories. The soy milk is 110 calories for the same serving, one cup, 240 milliliters. Next is oat milk. Oat milk is thinner than almond milk and has a very mild taste. Oat milk has 460 milligrams of calcium and that's 46%. Out of all the milks that I've tried, this is the one that I can stomach the most. It's very mild, it doesn't have much flavor, so it might be easier to drink. Depending on where you shop, you will find other flavors of oat milk. Rice milk. Calcium is 30%. It's very thin and watery with a mild taste. Rice milk also comes in many flavors. Now this is an almond cashew beverage. It's more like dessert. This has 160 milligrams of calcium, 16%. It's just 80 calories. It's thick, creamy. It's like drinking dessert. It's of course lower in calcium than the other milks that I just showed you. This is just an option if you want something different. You can find cashew milk at some stores, but it's more rare and that's why I didn't include it. I suggest you get one type of milk and see if you like it before buying all different types. You can use these milks as you would regular dairy milk. I have used almond milk, soy milk, oat milk in pancakes and other baked goods and they taste just fine. But to get the highest amount of calcium, it's best to drink the milk straight, the full eight ounces. Personally, I've never been a milk drinker and I really can't drink any of these milk straight. Um, so I'll show you what I do with oat milk and how I drink it. Of course, shake up any of these milks before using. It is really creamy. I'll put some of this mango puree in. This masks the taste of the oat milk. Even though it's mild, I'm just really sensitive and I just am not a big fan of any milk. You can put it in a blender, but you don't even need to do that. The puree mixes really well into the milk. It tastes like a mango lassi. It's really good. Sometimes I blend fresh fruit and the milk. Blueberries and banana are a good combo. You can use frozen berries to make a smoothie. Also a frozen dessert with more berries and less milk. Add a little honey or sugar and it'll taste like a frozen dessert. Almost like berry ice cream. If you drink coffee, warm the milk up and add some instant coffee or espresso. Another option is heating the milk up and adding cocoa powder for hot chocolate. Frozen hot chocolate works too. Basically use these non-dairy milks as you would regular milk. Next is yogurt. This is coconut milk yogurt, which I eat pretty much every day. Serving size is three quarters of a cup, six ounces or 170 grams. There's 390 milligrams of calcium, which is 39% of your daily value. There are other kinds of yogurt, soy milk yogurt, which is the most popular and probably what you can find in most stores. And the soy yogurt is 260 milligrams or 26%. Soy yogurt comes unsweetened, sweetened and with all different flavors. Make sure you look at the amount of sugar and other ingredients before buying the yogurt. There's almond milk yogurt, which is 150 milligrams, so it's 15%. That's also very popular and comes in lots of flavors. Cashew milk yogurt is becoming more available. I didn't include it in the list because it's low in calcium and it's hard to find. But if you do find it somewhere, just check the nutrition label to find out the amount of calcium. With any kind of yogurt, plain is best and healthiest. You can always add honey or whatever kind of fruit you want to make it taste better. 
sardines. These are sardines in 100% olive oil, 28% calcium. The milligrams is not listed. Serving size is half a cup drained or 85 grams. So this one container is one serving. Most of the sardines sold come in oil or tomato sauce. Just check the nutrition label and make sure you get the one that has more calcium. I'll show you what this looks like. Be careful when you open this foil cover because I have cut my finger on it. It's like a paper cut. So here are the sardines. Sardines smell really strong and have a strong taste, so it's not for everybody. They have tiny bones and you do have to eat them to get the calcium. They're usually about three whole small sardines in a can. Sometimes they will have the scales, so just scrape it off gently and you will find a small bone in the middle. And you do have to eat that, don't worry, you're not going to choke on it, it's just very small. It's not hard, you can easily bite it. For most people, it's hard to eat sardines straight out of the can. What I like to do is put a little bit of turmeric, red chili powder, garlic powder, and salt. Heat up a small cast iron pan with a little oil, fry the fish on both sides for a few minutes, and it'll develop a nice crust. It's very tasty and takes less than 10 minutes to make. Canned salmon with bones has 181 milligrams or 18% for a three ounce can. Salmon's mild and a good option if you can't get the sardines down. Canned salmon is pressure cooked, so the bones are soft and they're edible. I know it's weird to eat the bones for some of you, but just mash it up, eat that as well as the skin. It's really good for you. Salmon cakes are easy to make as well as salmon curry. Um, you can substitute salmon for the sardines in my sardine curry recipe, and I'll leave a link to that below. Next is orange juice with calcium and vitamin D, not from concentrate. Eight ounce, 240 milliliter serving size, 350 milligrams of calcium or 35%. These waffles are what I eat most mornings. 233 milligrams of calcium, and that's 20% of your daily value. These are the original, which tastes pretty good, and the blueberry. Serving size is two waffles. Butter, I can handle a tiny bit, so I do put a little bit on the waffles. And maple syrup, a fruit compote, or fresh fruit. These waffles are also gluten-free. In case you're counting calories, it's 210 calories for two waffles. English muffins, one muffin, and you get 8% calcium. Surprisingly, I have found some rolls that have about 10% calcium or a little bit more. So it's a good idea to go through your bread aisle and look through the rolls and loaves of bread and figure out what has a decent amount of calcium. So you can add that to your diet. Blackstrap molasses, just one tablespoon and you get 191 milligrams or 19%. It has some iron and a lot of potassium too. This may be hard to find in the stores, but you can order it online and I'll leave links below if I can find it. I did go a little nuts and get one too many bottles of this. I got too excited because only one tablespoon can give you so much calcium. I'm gonna show you how thick it is. Although it's very sweet, it's got a very strong taste that not everyone's gonna like. Get it down fast, drink some water, and you're good. This might be hard to find in stores, so I have put a link to it right below in the description section so you can try and buy it online. I did get a little excited and bought too many bottles, and um, I would suggest that you just buy one or two bottles, see if you like it, so you can have a tablespoon every day. Tofu. The serving size is 3 ounces or 85 grams, 90 calories per serving, and 10% calcium. The package does not list how many milligrams of calcium. With tofu, I usually buy the extra firm or firm. I already ate this firm tofu yesterday. It's really easy to make. I just take the block, squeeze the water out, season it on both sides, and just pan fry it. Give it a few minutes on each side until it develops a nice crust. When you put a cloth around it and press it to get the water out, you don't have to press it for a long time or put a weight on it. The recipes for tofu are endless. I'll leave links to some recipes right below this video. This is completely random, but I bought some cereal for my family and of course I looked at the calcium content. Got cinnamon toast crunch and 
uh, Lucky Charms, which I don't eat. They have a lot of sugar, but they do have about 10% calcium. So you can look through your cereal aisle and see if your favorite cereal has a good amount of calcium. It's hard to eat the same thing every day for breakfast. You do need some variety. And you can have the cereals with one of the non-dairy milks. As for beans, white beans have the most calcium. 132 milligrams for 200 grams of cooked white beans. That's seven ounces. Chickpeas have 100 milligrams. As for greens and vegetables, one cup cooked collard greens has 266 milligrams of calcium. Kale is 179. Mustard greens, 165. Soybeans, 175. Bok choy, 160. Broccoli rob, 100. Swiss chard, 100. Okra, 82. Sweet potato, 76. Broccoli, 60. Raw watercress, 4 ounces or 120 grams, has 188 milligrams of calcium. One tablespoon of chia seeds has 76 milligrams of calcium. There are other vegetables that contain calcium, but in much smaller amounts, so that's why I didn't include it on the list. Almonds. You get 8% calcium for a quarter cup serving or 30 grams. These are raw whole almonds. Figs. If you eat four of these or 40 grams, you get 4% calcium. They do have a lot of fiber, so if you can't handle having too much fiber, it's best to avoid them. What I found is that it takes a lot of discipline and planning to get that 100% every day. And the reality is it's not going to happen every day, so it's okay. Just try to do the best you can. I hope this video gave you enough information to get 100% calcium every day. I know how hard it is to plan your meals around calcium content, but now you have a list and it'll be easy to get started. Try and include most of these foods into your diet. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share this video. Also, if you want to see more informational videos like this one, just put a comment right below this video. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Um, try to have, uh, you know, like a... Ah! and see if you can live with eating all of them. <laughs> Extra sodium and other things like that. <laughs>